What's up guys, in this video I'm going to go through some tips that I learned while I was doing Zamorak on the first day of release. Some stuff that helped me get my kills, made the fight a hell of a lot easier and I wanted to share them with you. In this video we are going to be covering how to get through the dungeon in a easier way. Some stuff you can apply to the mini boss that blocks the way to Zamorak that can be a little bit of a pain when you are learning it but there is something you can do to make your life way easier there as well. Then I'm going to talk through Zamorak on some of the things that will make your life easier while learning that boss as well. This is not going to be a guide, this is just going to be me mentioning a few of the things that I thought was important to share with you guys so while you are doing your kills if it's anything you don't already know about hopefully it does make it a lot easier and does help you out with that being said do leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's talk about this so first of all, before we get started, I have already posted a guide to actually show you exactly how to run through the dungeon, which path you should take, and all of the things that you can ignore and stuff like that to make your life a bit easier. It is confusing as hell to get through the dungeon on your first try, and there's definitely things that you can ignore and pathways that you don't have to go down, so hopefully that does help you out. If you need that, I will link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. The first thing I wanted to mention is during the dungeon while you are running through that you are going to run into demons and also mages and other cultists sort of people while you're running through there. Keep an eye out for healers. These will be called things like treaters or life weavers. You want to kill those first as they will heal up other units that you're trying to kill. They will heal up any units, especially the demons as well, which are tanky as hell. So you want to make sure you focus off the healers first and then move on to the other things. Once you follow through the path that I showed in that video, you will come to this place here and first the first boss. The first boss isn't really anything too difficult, but it is a bit confusing the first time you did it. I did die here when I was learning and it was a little bit confusing and threw me off. However, there's a really easy way to get through this. By far the most dangerous and hardest part of this fight is when the actual mage will put down circles on the ground that travel in towards your character and then back out along a set line. Because these are on a set line, when they hit you, what they do is they explode and deal damage to you. However, once they explode, they will not return and you can just stay where you were. As long as you stay on the same tile or in the same position where the, tile, the, the bombs are going to hit you, then you'll be okay. I tucked ourselves in this corner here, thanks to Salty Llama who figured this out very quickly. We tucked ourselves up here nicely and then we just tanked the first couple of hits from the circles. And then once that was done, we wouldn't get hit by them anymore. As long as you don't run around like an absolute madman, then you'll be absolutely fine to stand here. DPS the, the, the mage down, then kill the demon staying in the same place and then kill the mage again and move on from here as long as you stay in the same place you'll be okay just keep your health high tank this couple of hits and then continue on from that makes life way easier don't run around like crazy because you will take a lot of damage and die once you've killed that boss, you'll go through this portal and through this portal, there will be a demon in the middle of a circle. There's going to be some mages around the outside of the room. Save yourself some time and just attack the demon. Don't bother killing off the mages first. Just drop your sunshine or death swiftness or zerk and go to crazy on the actual demon. As you kill the demon, he's going to heal himself from the mages. It is easier to do damage to the demon and force him to heal off the mages as he will get healed once, but instantly consume the mages. Killing the mages takes longer than dealing the damage that it takes for him to heal them. So this is absolutely better better to just kill the demon and let him actually absorb the mages and deal with those for you. This brings us to the Zamorak fight. We're already here. There's not really much to show through the dungeon except for the path and stuff. Other than that, uh, you'll probably be okay. But the first thing I'm going to show you guys for this fight is when you're killing Zamorak, you have to take him to each of the edicts around the room. That's these icons that you can see in the platforms. You want to take him to those and then you can phase him through into different phases and drop his health down by luring him to those and putting yourself in there to charge it up. Now, the order that you do this is important. It is important to know which is the good order or a working order to, to make your life easier easier. Each edict represents a mechanic that Zamorak will then use during the fight. This is important because there's some mechanics which are a pain in the ass and you don't want to deal with, so knowing which ones to avoid or you or actually add to the fight last is super helpful. I will be making a guide at some point, so keep an eye out for that. So I'm not going to mention exactly what all of the mechanics do in this video, but I will show you on screen now the order that I would suggest you do these edicts to until I can double check and make sure that this is the either best way or if there's a better way to do it. This is just what I did. I know it made life easier, so I'm just going to suggest this to you for now and obviously if another way comes out better then i'll either comment something down below or if someone knows then you comment it and i'll pin it and that's absolutely fine so as you can see on screen now this is the order that i would do this in i would do it in the order of six one three four 
five and two and of course all those numbers are on screen for you to see the representation of that four now that you know the order of that let me explain what you need to do once you've killed all the mages off you're going to run to the six edict run into that one and just stand in there and let that charge up once it's charged up you will be able to deal damage to zamorak breaking a shield which will show up as red damage when you attack him and then you want to deal as much damage as you can to get his health down his actual health as you can see on the screen now and get that to the phase point the phase point is seen by the markers here once you reach that his health bar will turn gray and you won't be able to do any more damage to him it's just kind of waste of damage he will heal that back then you want to jump into the realm and kill the mage in the realm come back out and then you can move to another edict that's how you deal with this and every time you activate an edict you give zamorak another ability but you also buff yourself slightly as well that's all i'm going to say about the actual fight for now other stuff will just be tips that are going to help you through the fight so let's move on to those one thing that is incredibly useful to know about is when you do charge one of the edicts up, you are going to get a surge of adrenaline, putting you all the way to 100% no matter where you were. If you had 10% adrenaline, you jump up to 100%. This means that when you go into the actual edict to charge it up each time for a new one, you can actually dump any adrenaline that you have and then get that adrenaline surge to throw off any more damage. For example, if you go into an edict with 100% adrenaline, drop your sunshine death swiftness or berserk and then you can throw out something like a tsunami or a staff spec or anything like that and then as soon as your adrenaline fills back up again you can then use any thresholds or any other ultimates or anything to output as much damage as possible for example for me on a staff of armadil i will go in there drop a sunshine use an adrenaline potion use tsunami and staff spec and then by the time the thing charges up i'll get another 100 percent adrenaline i can use omni power i can use tendrils i can use wild magic whatever i need to use to get out as much damage as possible just make sure when you are going into these edicts and charging it up that you take advantage of the fact that you will get 100% adrenaline. It's going to be incredibly useful and it is something that will help you speed up your kills and make your life way easier. One of the questions I got most on stream was how do you actually move and charge up the second edict or more than that? Once you've charged up the first edict, like I said before, you need to make sure you empty his health bar as far as you can down to the phasing point. First, you're going to have a red bar. You need to kill that and make it go down to zero. And then you can deal with his normal health, which is the actual health of the boss. Once that hits the phase HP, it's going to change back to a gray bar, as mentioned before. And then as soon as that hits that, you can go back into the realm or the infernus by clicking on this icon here. Once you are in there, there will be a mage in this area just use it anticipate or freedom as you run towards it and then kill this off once you've killed it press the button again to go back to the zamorak fight and then move to the next edict if you don't kill that mage you will not be able to charge another edict as the mage in that realm or infernus is actually going to be stopping that from happening so make sure you go in there if you go in too soon and there's no mage in there then just come back out make sure you deal as much damage to zamorak as possible get his health bar back to the gray and then head back in one of the more difficult mechanics is going to be the insta kill or the big high hitting ability that he does do and this is one of the ones that threw me off for a long time but once you figure out how it works your life becomes quite a lot easier you can see this mechanic as he will wrap his wings around himself and sort of charge up an attack what you want to do is if you can you want to stun him immediately and then deal as much damage as you can to make sure you break the actual charging you will have to get one stun from each player in the actual instance so if you have three players then you need to do three stuns or one each and in a solo you do only have to stun him the once as soon as you land the stun you then need to deal damage to stop the charge and then depending on how quickly you break the charge then it will depend on how much damage you actually get taken from this if you do it quickly it can deal really not that much but if you do take a little while it can pretty much one hit you this mechanic cannot be dodged but it can be dealt with in a pretty easy way if you don't get the stun off early enough and deal enough damage quickly enough then what you want to do is use your defense abilities such as reflect debilitate resonance or barricade or even immortality to make sure that you survive this attack you can use also a vitality potion as well as that of course is going to double your hp meaning you are going to be able to tank a lot higher of a hit there is two situations in which you can actually get this mechanic and one of them can be rather awkward so we're going to talk about that in just a second the first one is just the normal mechanic when it charges up and you can use the stun on him and do the damage and then you can just tank the hit or you can use things like resonance or reflect reduce the damage use a vitality potion and just just basically deal with the damage sometimes however zamorak is going to force you to go into the realm with a letter of of your head which you need to match with the actual symbols in there as well when this happens there's going to be a demon inside that you need to kill as well but 
the likelihood is he is going to send you in there with that mechanic of him charging this up. You need to be aware if he's going to do that because when he shoves you in, just double check that if he has wrapped his wings around himself, then you need to make sure you are ready for this. Keep 100% adrenaline, kill that demon off, and I would suggest using immortality. The reason I use immortality when I am in here is because you have to be very aware of when this attack is going to come. It will still hit you while you're in the realm and it can come out of nowhere and you only get a few seconds to react if you aren't paying attention very, very closely. What I ended up doing is when he forced me through the actual portal, you are going to go ahead, kill the demon off with just basic abilities, making sure you have 100% adrenaline. Then as you are killing the demon, put on your shield and use immortality straight away. Immortality lasts a long time, so you don't have to worry. Keep your shield on while you take your time, match up the symbol, and walk to the correct symbol. The attack will hit you at some point. It will likely kill you. Don't panic. You'll come back to life because that's what immortality does. This does cost you 100% adrenaline, but it's better than dying. And of course, you can still use things like reflect and stuff, but I would just suggest doing this as it does make your life a lot easier and you don't have to panic and it, it, you're going to be okay. It is worth noting that barricade does not completely block the damage from this. It will only reduce it, I believe, by 50%. But again, don't quote me on that. It does reduce the damage though. And I believe resonance does the same. I also do believe that you can use Barricade and Disruption Shield or Resonance and Disruption Shield and these will stack, reducing the damage down to something like 1000 or 2000. The final tip that I'm going to throw in here for this video is when you are doing this in a duo or plus with more people, then you want to be a taking turns who goes into the realm to kill the mage. The reason being is when you go into the realm, you actually get a stack of a bleed that reduces the amount of healing that your food does, but also you take bleed damage while you are in there. So take turns doing this as then the stacks won't go as high. So you go in and then your friend goes in and then you go back in and your friend goes back in and just level this out. That way you're not taking a ton of, ton of damage running out of food while your friend does all the other stuff on the outside of the arena it is also probably worth mentioning that while you are in the actual realm or while your friend is in the realm uh, i know it's not called the realm but the infernus whatever it's called uh, you can actually still take zamrak over to get ready to go on to the next edict while you are waiting don't go on to the edict until your friend is out though as ideally you do want to have all of you on the actual edict as you do charge it because of that extra adrenaline of course that brings us to the end of these tips. There will be more that I will learn in the near future. This is just the stuff that I picked up and thought was incredibly useful for me to know while I was fighting this boss on day one. I spent a long time doing this boss today. I think the stream was a total of like nine hours. So I was incredibly tired. So I do apologize for any mix up of words and stuff. But I did want to get this out nice and early for you guys to have any help that I could offer, of course, in any way whatsoever. So that being said, if you did enjoy, I would very much appreciate a like on on the video especially if it did help you out in some way or another do subscribe to the channel if you are new around here i do plan on making a guide a quick like early guide i guess soon and then i'll do an in-depth guide once i know the boss inside out at some point finally thank you very much to the channel members who support the channel that much extra every single day it is incredibly appreciated i really really do appreciate you guys you help out more than you probably know so thank you very much your names have been on screen of course if anyone else wants to join the channel members then click the join button by subscribe button you can support the channel and get some perks like early video links and a few other things as well anyway other than that, thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with Zamorak. Good luck with your drops. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.